Today we have to cancel the Washington Post for an article published yesterday with the exceedingly bizarre headline, Zookeeping isn't common in the black community. This black zookeeper wants to change that. Now, if you have a moderately well-tuned BS detector, you hopefully have already noticed a major problem with the claim being made here. Yes, zookeeping isn't common in the black community. It also isn't common in any other community. Zookeeping is among is common among zookeepers, and that's it. From what I've read statistically, over 90% of zookeepers engage in zookeeping. But the numbers are considerably lower for all other communities, including white people. I've been a white person most of my life, and I've never known a zookeeper. It's not like zookeeping is a profession that white suburban parents tend to push their kids into. Growing up, I, I never had a friend tell me, man, you know, I really want to be a, go to school and be a doctor, but my dad is pressuring me to keep zoos. He won't shut up about it. You know, he says, uh, if I was a zookeeper. My father was a zookeeper. Son, you come from a long line of zookeepers. Now, that's not a conversation I ever had. But let's not let any of that get in the way of racializing the zookeeping profession. So here's the Washington Post. Craig Sappho was at Fresno Chaffee Zoo's Big Cats exhibit when he saw the man. Outbounds this black guy in a zoo uniform, Sappho said. He had this walk, like the coolest walk you'll ever see. And I think, ah, that's cool. They let their volunteers come in. Then he realized the man wasn't a volunteer. He had his training buoy, his target stick, his meat pouch, Sappho said. And he realized, oh my God, he's the keeper. Now, just to interject here, you, you should not be walking around the zoo with your target stick or your meat, patch out, meat pouch out. Um, you, you should, there are children present. But that's neither here nor there. Back to the article. It says, the man didn't fit the profile of who most zookeepers in America are, white and female. I was mortified that I said that, Sappho said, because like the man in Fresno, California, he was watching during a conference in 2018. Uh, and Sappho, too, is a black zookeeper. Zappho, 47, is the curator of large carnivores at the Smithsonian's National Zoo in D.C. And for decades, he has often been one of the few, if not the only, zookeeper of color in the room. Even as his responsibility and prestige in the field grew, his black friends would dismiss his work as white people stuff. And indeed, the field is about 74% white. Now, wait a second. 74% white? But white people also comprise about the same percentage of the overall population in the country. That would mean that white people are proportionally represented among zookeepers. What's the problem here? And even if zookeepers were 100% white, even if there were no ZOCs, zookeepers of color, still, what's the problem here? We'll have to read on to find out. It says, when he was at work at the National Zoo, where he's been for more than 25 years, people who didn't know him often assumed, as Sappho did with the black zookeeper in Fresno, that he's a volunteer or even a janitor. The same thing happened to Jordan Veasley, an animal zookeeper at Cougar Mountain Zoo in Washington State, who said that he gets asked, if I'm, a, if I'm a janitor or if I clean the bathrooms when he's walking around the zoo. Now, another brief side note. Um, that doesn't happen. I mean, I don't mean to question Jordan Veasley's lived experience, but I don't think that happens. Nobody's walking up to a random black guy at the zoo and saying, excuse me, do you clean the bathrooms? That's the kind of thing that you think white people would do if you've never met one in person and have learned about them only through Ibram X. Kendi seminars. No white person is just going to go up to a black guy and say, you there, yes, the, the toilets are unsightly in the restrooms. Please attend to them at once. I assume you're the janitor, after all. I'm just, I'm skeptical about that, but let's keep reading a little more. It says, Veasley, 32, whose social media posts as Jungle Jordan are wildly popular, finally tackled his, um, his unicorn status in an emotional viral video. Okay, we have to stop again because you know I had to go find that emotional viral video about black zookeeping, and I did find it. And this viral video, by the way, was filmed in 2018 and has 4,000 views on YouTube. So we're really stretching the bounds of the viral designation here. Unless, the guy, unless they meant that the guy filmed the video while sick with a virus. I'm not sure. But uh, anyway, here it is. What is up, everybody? It's your boy, Jungle Jordan. As you can see by the title of this video, this is a really important video that I've been wanting to make for a long time, and it's a pretty emotional topic for me, and that, but I feel like this needs to be said, and everything I'm about, I'm about to say means a lot to me, and it's very close to my heart, and it's really hard to talk about, so like I said, it took me a long time to even try to attempt to make this video. Even as I'm filming right now, it took me a long time to try to think of an intro of how to start this video, so I'm gonna go ahead and just get off and get into it. I'm gonna start by saying I 
am a black zookeeper. Now, this means a lot. There's a lot that comes with this, with this phrase. There's two words there, black zookeeper. Both probably words you would have never heard combined together. Matter of fact, never probably have seen those words combined together. But yes, we do exist. Well, yeah, I mean, those aren't words I hear together very often because I rarely talk about zookeepers. No offense. I, I don't hear any words combined with the word zookeeper because this sub subject simply doesn't come up very often in my life. And on the rare occasion that I have had the opportunity to discuss zookeeping in any depth, I would normally refer to the zookeepers as just zookeepers without feeling the need to affix any racial designation to them. I mean, now that you mention it, I did see an Asian zookeeper at a zoo a few weeks ago, but I didn't go up to them and say, excuse me, Asian zookeeper, I have a question. In fact, I didn't think of them as an Asian zookeeper at all, really. I think I just thought of them as, as a zookeeper who happened to be Asian. But all of that is beside the point. I go back to the question I posed at the beginning. Even if black people are underrepresented among zookeepers, why is that automatically a problem? Why does it matter? See, this is what the racialists do. They walk around the country randomly poking their heads into rooms and saying, hey, there should be more black people in here. That doesn't, they don't seem to care much about the math. There are a finite number of black people in the country, in the world even. There's only so many to go around. And yet, and yet they demand dramatically increased numbers of black people and other racial minorities in every, in every field and in every walk of life and in every nook and cranny of society. But the, the math doesn't work. If you insist on more black zookeepers and your demands are fulfilled, that's going to mean fewer black people in whatever field or profession they would have gone into instead. That problem should be apparent, I would think. Also, nobody's talking, taking into account free choice. Each individual black person in the country is a human being with free will. If not many of them become zookeepers, it's because not many have decided to make that choice with their lives. You can create more black zookeepers only by convincing black individuals to not choose whatever they were going to choose and choose zookeeping instead. But in what way does that represent progress? That's a lateral move. That's a reshuffling. You're shifting pieces around on the board. You're not adding new ones. Or perhaps I'm looking at this the wrong way. If we can't increase black representation in zookeeping by increasing the volume of black zookeepers, the other option is to decrease the volume of white zookeepers. Maybe we should fire 95% of the white zookeepers across the country, thereby tripling the percentage of black zookeepers in one fell swoop. Better yet, the most equal thing would be to have no zookeepers at all. Open the cages, let the animals wander around as they will. That would be true equity. It would also make for a much more entertaining zoo experience. And most importantly, racial balance at the zoo will finally be the last piece we need in order to usher in racial harmony across the globe. Seems like a crazy plan, perhaps. But it's better than the one offered by the Washington Post and black zookeeper Craig Sappho. And that's why they are both today, I, I'm afraid to say, canceled. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with all your friends.